wasn't uh, an okay season. I feel like they brought the heat at the end. As a viewer, I think we need to have this throughout. There could be levels, you know what I mean? But don't get to like the last three episodes to really show us what you're made of. I just feel like they kind of cheated the viewers. But anyway, let's get into the end of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we're at Aquafina's <laughs> rose party. And I'm, I'm so disappointed in this new and renewed Lisa Renna, where she's like, I am at a certain age, so I'm gonna say whatever I want. And I'm just like, girl, you should have said that the whole season. You're very interesting now. Two episodes, like to the end of the season, like, come on. Like, I'm just so disappointed. Like, you could have given us this the entire season. Now that you realize that after the reunion, you'll be analyzed and so like so this is what happens after the reunion the producers production or whatever network they all go back and they chat about who they want to come back for the next season so i feel like lisa renna is doing this and it's smart to assure that she will be in um on the next season but it's just it's just a, such a cheat to the viewers because if you're going to give us a show honey Give us a show. Don't show up in the like second to third act and it's just like now it's getting interesting. No, grip me from the beginning because now you're speaking your mind. You're walking over and you're having confrontations. You're not letting anybody say anything about you and you're not apologizing for what you're saying. The last episode of the show, we deserve better. Lord, why is Eden in a ball gown? I mean, it's a beautiful ball gown. I just don't understand why she's in it. It's a rose party. Beverly Hills is so extra in that accurate Dorit impersonation. Cal was really funny in her confessionals to me this season. I feel like she had a lot of little fun one-liners and a lot of great impressions. I like fun Kyle. Um, I feel like she got a little lost this season in between different storylines. I think she got kind of lost some more in trying to be everybody's friend and also to, uh, finally standing up for Kim. I don't really feel like we got to know anything about her this season, like anything that she really has going on besides Mar Mar Maurizio. I have people calling him Mario because you know what? I feel like he gives me Mario Lopez tease. The fashions at this tasting party is all over the place. I mean, there are ball gowns, then there are people in pantsuits, then like Erica Jane in this like Star Trek bedazzle outfit. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what is the theme. I haven't seen any wedges, but I've seen ball gowns. What is going on there, DePump? So happy that Kim is a grandmother. I'm over it. I'm, I'm over the grandbaby and I haven't even seen the kid. I just feel like it was not like it was too much. I just feel like it was over the top because whenever we see her, it's all about this. And I feel like maybe she's overcompensating. Uh, for being a grandma to just show people that she's well you know what I mean it's just like I'm a grandma now I love this kid and it just seems like she's putting or doing the most to let people know that she's okay it kind of seems like a a front like I know she's I I can feel that she's excited it appears to be that she's excited but I feel like she's doing just a little bit extra because of her addiction it's really sad because I don't think Eden is coming back because at Aquafina's <laughs> Let me stop because I'm really going to call her Aquafina. Um, what is her name? Lisa's daughter. Pandora. At her rose party, uh, Rena and Eileen are grilling Eden and asking her, or like, or like just saying to her, like, why didn't you really stand up for Rena? And Eden is just like, well, I spoke my truth and then I removed myself from the conversation because it no longer involved me. Now, Eden, in real life, that is perfect, sweetie. However, this is reality TV, specifically train wreck TV. You have to be in the drama. You have to live the drama. You have to start the drama. You have to eat the drama. You have to be the cause of it. You have to be the one that puts it back together and breaks it up. You got to be messy and you also have to develop a click. I don't think that Eden found a click um, or a partnership for her to come back next season. And I don't think she really did anything uh, that interesting um, to keep her on. Or I, I just don't really think that she invested in anything to uh, make her have a storyline that we want to see what happens next with her. I feel like, you know, although it was a tacky storyline to have with... Uh, her being obsessed with Kim's addiction. I feel like she kind of she probably should have stayed there maybe and went into it a little bit deeply about how they know each other and you know, you got to spill some tea, Eden, and I just I just feel bad. I think she's a good person, and uh, therefore, being a good person, I don't think that Train Wreck TV is for you because you have to get gutter in these shows. You have to become very cutthroat. You have to be messy, and you know what? I don't think that's who Eden is, and that's probably why she's not going to come back next season. 
So then, like, at uh, <laughs> Pandora's, <laughs> Aquafina, Rosé's party, uh, Lisa, you know, is being the hostess or whatever. And then some guy who looks like he has had way too much <laughs> surgery, uh, uh, reconstructed, not reconstructed, plastic surgery on his face. Like, it, he was doing the most. He looked like, um, he looked deceased. Anyway, he tells Lisa that he wrote this song for her. And I'm like, sure, Jan. Lisa didn't even believe it. But anyway, he starts singing this song to her. Um, and then Kyle, who always likes to let the audience know that she has very flexible, like, you know, um, like that her hip flexes are juicy. You know what I mean? Because Kyle is always squatting or splitting. And when she gets that ponytail going, girl, you can't tell Miss Kyle Riches or... Uh, Spanish last name, nothing. What is her last name, Kyle? Something. Maurizio's wife. You can't tell her nothing because Lisa is dancing. So then Kyle drops it like it's hot and she gets back up. And I'm like, Kyle, we get it. You're flexible. Calm down. We know that's how you got Mauricio, girl. We ain't hating. Girl, then Kim and Dorit have a little session together. They uh, step aside and they start talking. And Dorit tells Kim about how Rena like blew up at her at Hong in Hong Kong. And then Dorit is just like, I feel like maybe Lisa's, but you know what? See, this is the thing with Dorit. This is how she gets out of mess. She says, do you think in front of, um, in front of a statement? And so the onus is off of her for saying like, or for gossiping or saying something mean about someone because she put, because she put, don't you she put think in front of it or don't you think and she tries to encourage that person to maybe think a certain way without saying this is what she believes or this is what she thinks because then she says to kim do you think that maybe um lisa is uh rena that she's uh projecting maybe her issues that she's having at home on me do you think that's what's going on instead of just saying it i think she's having problems with uh harry so now she's trying to um put her issues on me. So instead of just saying it, it's very smart because she can now say, I didn't say that. I just said, do you think? Which erases the cutthroatness or the shadiness or the messiness or the, dis or the disdain that came with that comment because it's, do you think? Instead of, it wasn't a statement that I said. I just said, do you think? I just asked the question. People, ooh, messy people do that all the time. I didn't say it, I just asked the question. Nah, you made a statement, but you put a question mark at the end of it as a way to punk out of just really speaking your truth. If you notice, Kim is quiet. She is not saying nothing to Dorit because she remembers in Amsterdam when Lisa Renna broke that glass and almost slit her throat. So Kim has learned her lesson. So she's sitting up there and she is letting Dorit dig her own hole for the reunion because Lisa Renna is going to be lit at their reunion. Have y'all seen the previews? Girl, I can't wait for tonight. I, um... I don't have cable, so I have to wait a few hours before it's loaded on a site, and then I can watch it and review it. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it up to you guys tonight, but that reunion looks delicious. I do, however, agree with Kim's assessment of Lisa Renna. She said that Kim, uh, uh, Kim said that Renna doesn't take responsibility for anything. She likes these fires and she likes to play victim when she hasn't done anything, and I do agree, um, but that's why she's good TV. So then Vanderpump and Kyle come over. So Vanderpump, Dorit, Kim, and Kyle are just having Lisa Renna for dinner. They are just talking all types of crap about it. So Lisa Renna is like a couple feet away. So she looks over at Kim and she yells over, hi, Kim, how are you doing? Talking like really saying really nice things about her grandson and Kim being so fake like she is not talking about Renna. It's just like, oh, hey, how are you? It's so good to see you. And Lisa Vanderpump, this is why she's my girl, and this is why she's on this show every season. She looks at him and she's just like, are you kidding me? Why don't you just tell her that you were just talking about her? <laughs> Lisa Vanderpump is so slick. Not only did she throw Kim under the bus, homegirl jumped in the driver's seat and ran her over there, backed up and ran all over again. Vanderpump is so messy, but she is so smart, and this is why she's on this show, because she could have let that go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I feel like it was, a, if it was a different situation and it wasn't a TV show and it was just friends hanging out, she wouldn't have said, you know, confront her. But she knows the cameras are on them and that they got to deliver a show. So Vanderpump says, confront Lisa Renna. So girl, Kim takes the bait and tells Lisa Renna that she was just talking about her. And Renna's just like, 
Oh, really? So Miranda, like the little baby she is, runs to Eileen and tells her everything that was just said about her um, by Kim. And she's, you know, she's like, oh my goodness, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. Stop it. You're playing Eileen like a fiddle because Rena knows that Eileen ain't never scared, okay? She ain't never been scared and she's not gonna start today. So Eileen is just like, oh, they're talking about you? Really? Cow, Kim, Vanderpump, let's talk about this. Dorit, get over here. What's going on? And then Rena does this. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? I don't want you. Yes, you did. You wanted Eileen to do it. That's why you went because you know Eileen has the balls to confront people. This is the friend that you hide behind. Everybody has that friend that will light it up. You know what I mean? We all have that friend that we know if we're on, if we're having a conversation and we know that we're a bit that we're in a conflict with someone, we all have that one friend that we know if we talk to them. We know that they're going to take it upon themselves to get it right with whatever way they probably might do it. They might um, bring us all together to have to sit down or they might fix the situation with their hands. We all have that one friend that pops off every situation. Everybody has that person. I'm thinking about the person right now. It's my mother. <laughs> So Vanderpump and Dorit have not yet walked over yet. And Kyle and Kim and Eileen and Renna are all having this conversation. And then Renna, because, um, not Renna, then Vanderpump in her confessional says this about um, uh, Lisa Renna and Erica Jane. And I was just like, they are gonna drag you at the reunion. Because, and I understand, Vanderpump was getting defensive of her friend Dorit because she feels like the girls aren't being very nice to somebody that she brought into the group. Totally understand. However, in your confessional, uh, Vanderpump, what you said was just out of pocket. She says that she says in her confessional that if Renna keeps her mouth closed and Erica James keeps her legs closed, the group won't have any problems. Honey, they are going to come for you at this reunion. <laughs> like, why? And Erica Jane even said it. She was just like, Lisa Vanderpump is obsessed with my coochie. Because she is. Vanderpump made so many comments about her vagina the entire party that it was uncomfortable for me just watching it. And I'm just like, what if I was, like, I couldn't imagine being the person that was the, uh, for lack of a better word, the vagina of the joke for uh, this person who invited me to their home and they keep on, every time I see them, I'm getting a drink, I'm in a conversation, I'm on the swing. They bring up my vagina. It was uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable and really obsessive, Vanderpump. So girl, while uh, uh, Rita and Kim are having a little uh, conversation, confrontation, Dorit walks over and she's just like, I'm right here. I was like, oh my goodness, Dorit, wait a minute. Hold up, Connecticut, Connecticut Dorit has surfaced, okay? British Dorit is gone because if you realize, guys, through this entire conversation that or confrontation, Dorit's accent is in and out, in and out. It is American at some parts, you know, the confrontational parts. But when she wants to get back into being classy, she becomes British Dorit. But when she wants to get her, her point across, she becomes American Dorit and walks up to Lisa Renner and says, I'm right here. What? I was like, yo! And even Lisa Renna was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was shocked too, Renna. I was shocked too, girl. I was not that interested in Dorit this season. I didn't feel like she brought much to the show. I will say this. I love how she stands up for herself. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times when a um, when there's a new cast member on these shows, the new cast member is very timid. Unless they come in as a villain. You know what I mean? But she was very, um, she stood her ground and she spoke uh she spoke her opinions and she didn't back down from anything like she stood her ground she was not going to let just anybody say anything about her whether i agree with her or not i like the fact that she was not a pushover especially in her first season so that was very commendable then we spend an uncomfortable amount of time on whether or not lisa renna has a pill problem and this is the thing that like i was talking about before about how i feel like this show has been really lazy with their storylines because they made an entire season out of this Lisa, Dorit, and Eden are hanging out. Eden, who talks about her addiction, it was um, uh, dragging Kim through the through the mud because they were, you know, they shared a crack house together. She's talking about how she puts Xanax or takes pops of Xanax every day or something. It was awkward. Lisa Renna and Dorit really felt uncomfortable. They both paused. They both held their breath because Eden is talking about her addiction and then she's talking about how she pops the Xanax. So to them, it was awkward that this lady who came on the show talking about how she has this monstrous addiction, this uh, another addiction that killed her sister, her mother's an alcoholic, all of these problems, she's talking about popping the Xanax. So they were uncomfortable. So to break the ice, Lisa Renna talks about her pill bag. They all have a little joke about it and move on. 
Then in Mexico, Dorit brings it up as a little chuckle, a little laugh. Everybody um, supposedly laughs at the table, but then a couple people who have problems with Lisa Rinna ran with that gossip. I do not think that Dorit said it to um, make, uh, make fun of Lisa Rinna or make it seem like she had a pill problem. She was just taking back a joking conversation that they had and how the ice was broken over her pill bag. Vanderpump, who has a problem with Rinna, made it more than what it really was. Probably behind the scenes too, because she is the puppet master. Word out on the street that Lisa Vanderpump has little meetings with people act acting like they're hangouts and she's actually dropping tea about cast members and hoping that it comes up or somebody else in the cast regurgitates it in another scene and it can become their storyline but her hands are clean because she never said it on camera word on the street either way she's a smart cookie makes a good show then out of nowhere and i think it's because dorit met with lisa vanderpump and talked about this probably off camera uh, uh well of course it's off camera because it wasn't in the scene but i'm just it wasn't in the season but i think that this is what happens then all of a sudden Dorit comes to Eden's home or Eden comes to Dorit's home one or the other I don't know I think it was the other way around but anyway they meet up and all of a sudden uh Dorit is concerned and uh, maybe wondering if Renda's behavior is induced out of nowhere and I'm just like girl please y'all were just joking about her Xanax pill bag to break the ice because y'all were both concerned about Eden and her little uh Xanax habit so I just don't understand where all of this is coming from then in China um, they have, uh, um, Dorit and Renna have this conversation where it's just like, I'm um, not Dorit and Renna, Eden and Renna have this conversation where it's just like, Dorit told me that you're probably, uh, chemically induced. And I'm like, how did it go from here? That's why I feel like Lisa Vanderpump is a common den denominator in this issue because out of nowhere, it went from a joke to something serious and we did not see the transition. Because if you notice when, when it went from being a joke to baby Lisa Vanderpump, Lisa of Renna is in chemically induced. We didn't see what happened in between. We just know that all of a sudden Dorit was concerned because of a couple of little issues that they had back and forth. But all of a sudden, I don't know where she's putting her behavior and this, uh, the pill bag together where it's just like, this is, I'm concerned about maybe her behavior and maybe it's chemically induced. And I'm just like, this has Lisa Vanderpump hands all over it. Just as I say that, Lisa Vanderpump jumps in and makes the Dorit and Renna beef about her, where she says to Lisa Renna, you're doing to Dorit what you did to me. And I'm just like, Lisa, even Kyle, everybody, when Lisa Vanderpump said that, everybody just did this, you know, uh, uniform groan and was just like, oh, Lisa, like, where are you coming from? Because even Eileen was like, I thought you guys settled this. So where is this coming from? And I feel like Lisa Vanderpump never, uh, never forgave Renna. And I'm telling you guys, I feel like Dorit is Lisa Vanderpump's Brandy Glanville. And I feel like, because remember in the season of Lisa Vanderpump and Brandy Glanville, when their relationship fell apart, Brandy Glanville said at the reunion and throughout the season, uh, at the end when her and Lisa Vanderpump were kind of uh, breaking apart, she said that Lisa would meet with her and they would have these conversations about all of the ladies in the group. But Brandy didn't realize that she was giving her information so that she could, you know, have a feeling towards a certain person or feel a certain type of way or probably say something that was um, overheard or told to her by Lisa Vanderpump. And I think that's what Lisa uh, Vanderpump is doing with Dorit. Because Pretty coincidental that the one person that Lisa Vanderpump has like a huge vendetta with it, which is Lisa Renda that all of a sudden now her and Dorita having problems and even uh, Lisa Vanderpump says in her little confessional It's all going according to plan. Yeah, you're the puppet master. I'm not hating. This is entertainment This is what you're supposed to do. I don't know why the rest of the girls haven't joined in on the fun Then Kim jumps in and I'm glad that she's clean. I really really am However, I really felt like she should have stayed out of this argument and not went after Lisa Renna because I always and I've said it throughout my entire review of this season I have always felt like Lisa Renna's um, apprehension and um, just her being upset about how Kim was acting in that vehicle and being thrown under the bus by everybody else when she tried to address that something was wrong with Kim. I always stood with her on that because I get that the cast loves Kim and you know, she's Kyle's sister and they started off Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I honestly get it. So there's a loyalty there, but guys, there are receipts. Kim was high out of her mind in that uh, limo ride with Lisa Renna and she felt 
uncomfortable. And then Kim was attacking everybody at the dinner. And did she did not apologize to the people that she attacked. The people just let it go because Kim went to rehab. So I just, like, I get that Kim and Lisa Renna have beef, but it's just like, Kim, let it go. You started it. You were in the wrong. You never properly apologized. At least I didn't see it. But Lisa Renna has apologized. She has been messy to Kim as well. I feel like the both of them need to leave it alone because if we're just going to go tit for tat, then we have to realize the source of the issue. And nobody wants to deal with the source of the issue because it looks bad on Kim. And I just feel like if they dealt with that issue, that Kim was high probably that entire season, she was especially lit in that limo, and Lisa Rinna was uncomfortable. Just say that and move forward. But Kim, stay out of this conversation, girl. Because you know Lisa Renna is petty. Let's talk about the arrest. You know she has something deep down in her arsenal that she could bring up and start another war within this group. So let her live, please, Kim. Girl, then it starts getting heated. Now we're full-blown American Dorit because she is swinging her neck, putting her finger up, leaning into Lisa Renna, and just reading her for filth. So when Dorit starts leaning in, Renna starts leaning in, then Dorit puts the hand up. American Dorit puts the hand up. Listen up, Renna. If I can smell your breath, you're too close. Back off. I was like, yo, American Dorit. Why did you show up the entire season? I don't like London Dorit. I don't like British Dorit. I like American Dorit. If you come back next season, I want the American chick to be the first person we meet. This London uppity stuck up chick, it's really not you because if you realize you're really comfortable and um, cussing people out. So maybe you need to just stay there for entertainment purposes. At your home, you can be the British mother of Jagger and wife of PK. You can do all of that. But when you're on this TV show, we want American Dorit because American Dorit don't play around. We like her. Gosh, and even during this entire argument, uh, the alabaster Peter Thomas, a.k.a. PK, it's, it's, first of all, it was hilarious to me because he's like doing everything he can to get into this argument with women. What man sees a bunch of women having an argument and does anything less than get aroused? Like, I don't know why PK is like looking, trying to get into it, like getting upset himself. Like what dude even cares when chicks are arguing unless they're ripping off the tops? Like I just, I couldn't, I could not stand him. He was getting on my nerves the entire time. He's like looking over, you know, a bush. Then he's looking over like a, um, a pillar that was up. Then he's getting a drink and he's looking over at uh, other, looking over other people in conversations, trying to hear and see what the women are talking about. And I'm just like, I'm so sick of the husbands. Every franchise, I am sick of the husbands. They have too much camera time. We as the viewers do not care. Your base is mainly women, not um, you're not, it's not the full base, but I'm just saying, can we just be real here? It's women and probably a lot of gay men who are tuning into this show. Like straight dudes from Jersey is not watching this show. Stop catering to them. Cater to us. No more husbands. We're over them. They are boring and they are so draining because they come in and they just zap the, uh, pettiness out of the argument and it becomes something dark when it's just like, it was just a shady and messy argument. And here come your serious buzzkill um husbandry ruining everything uh for everybody then my girl lisa renna who cannot defend herself in an argument she pulls in erica jane to like try to deflect from her issues or or mainly, or mainly because Lisa Renna was losing the argument. So she wants to pull Erica Jane in. And then she's like, Dorit, why did you do this to Erica Jane? And I'm just like, oh my goodness, Renna, just... Why can you not just defend yourself in arguments? Like, she's so great in confessionals. Lisa Renna will defend herself to no end in a confessional. When she is confronted with people, she either runs to Eileen or she throws somebody else under the bus or she makes another situation bigger than what it really is to deflect from the fact that she's wrong. Lindari and Erica Jane are getting into it. So this just gives PK everything that he needs because he starts getting closer and closer and closer to the group so much. I never saw, or maybe you guys saw, but I didn't see, where Dorit asked PK to get her a drink. So he walks in with the drink. And then I'm just like, Erica Jane, why did you even do this to yourself? She says to PK, while he's there, and he was so happy that she even said anything. She says to PK, 
PK, do you think that I, you know, flashed you intentionally or whatever? He doesn't even address the flashing. He just starts ripping into her how she's a cold person and inherently cold and just really going in. And then Dorit is sitting back like a dummy watching her husband um, go off on the girl that she was having an argument with. Let me tell you something. Maybe it's just me, but I never want my dude to get in an argument or, you know, try to defend me against another chick. Unless that chick is like, you know, a wrestler. You know what I mean? Like somebody who you who you know that I probably can't beat. You know what I mean? Then I probably need him to come in and just remove me from the situation. But it is just such a um a buzzkill. It's so unarousing when a dude gets into an argument with a woman. It just seems so pathetic. Because PK just starts going in on Erica Jane. Then he starts going in on my lane. And I'm just like you look like such a punk, a loser. PK reminds me of the human embodiment of a yeast infection. He is so annoying. He's always there when nobody wants him to be. He's always in something when nobody wants him to be. And he lasts forever. Like he does not go away. You know what I mean? Like he stays with, he stayed within this argument far too long that he was really supposed to be there. Just like he stayed in this season far too long that he really needed to be. He should have been out in three days, but just like a hard, horrible, terrible uh, yeast infection that you can't fight, it stays about seven. PK stayed too damn long. And I was just over him. I was over this argument at this point because he came into it and it was just, I don't know, it just... I felt like it also clipped American Dorit's wings and I like seeing who she really was. So I guess I was also annoyed by the fact that um, Mr. Monistat came in and it was just getting into the argument now and now the focus was on him and I was just over it at that point. So then after Captain Yeast Infection comes in and kind of like takes the whole argument to another level. Erica and Dorit somehow are able to like mend fences again and apolo uh, Dorit apologizes again. Again, like I like Erica Jane. I didn't like the fact that all of a sudden she didn't remember that apology from Dorit in Hong Kong. I didn't like that. I thought that was petty. Like to make that girl grovel and have to apologize to you again. I just felt like that was ridiculous. And I didn't believe that Erica Jane did not believe that Eden um, or did not remember that Eden apologized. I felt like it was just a cop out, but they squash it and they're able to move on. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, not really out of nowhere, I get where Eden was coming from, but she tries to um, talk to Lisa Renna. And Lisa Renna and Eileen were very dismissive to her. And it, and it honestly looked like the cool girls who, um, who had like probably made friends with like the weird chick at the high school. Uh, and uh, they just made friends with her probably to get like her um, answers for a test or something that was really difficult and then once they took the test it was just like they were done with her because it looked as if they were very dismissive to her and uh, Lisa Renna just did not want to engage with her anymore and she was just like well after you told um, Lisa Vanderpump what I said I was I was shut down from you and I get where Renna was coming from but I also don't understand her being so guarded with Eden when you were the one who said it. Like you said that Kim was near death. Like how are you even mad at anybody but yourself? So to like treat her like that after um, after Eden, I feel like was very much a friend to Lisa Renna. I can understand why she was upset and why she felt like she was thrown away. But homegirl blew up at Lisa Renna. She called her a bee. She stormed out and twirled out in her little ball gown. Then she went to Vanderpump because Vanderpump came after her and was just like, what is going on? And she's just like, she used me. And she's like falling apart. And then Eden says to uh, Vanderpump, I, I should have opened up to you. I should have been a better friend to you. It was something she was saying to Vanderpump. And I was just like, Eden, sweetie, it's a little bit too late. You are not coming back. Because even Lisa Renna was like, oh, look who found her voice. Lisa Renna is so messy and I love her for it. Uh, I still, however, feel bad for Eden because she was right. You know, Lisa Renna got her to do her dirty work. And then when she was done with her, she threw her away. And Renna, it's accurate. We have a whole season to see how you treated her. So I do. I feel bad for Eden. And it's a shame that we won't get to see who she is. Unless, you know, unless she got that, you know, that Sassoon coin where she can convince production uh, to bring her on and maybe take a pay cut. I don't know. 
Uh, that's the only way that I would see her being back on the show because she just wasn't interesting enough. And I feel like her reactions and her really showing some sort of energy was too late to keep her on. Anyway, that's where the episode ends. It was a, uh, a lackluster season. They had a few fireworks at the end, a little too late. Um, I would like to see um, a few people come back, but um, at this point, I'm really not that much attached to the cast. I think Lisa Vanderpump is always a good cast member because she's messy and um, she will, she has great confessional. She has great shade. Uh, she will keep the drama going, you know what I mean? Uh, she's a puppet master, so you gotta keep the puppet master. I think Lisa Renna needs to come back because she is messy and she um, she's not a puppet master, but she's a fire starter. She will get the fire started. So I think she also needs to come back. Um, I'm kinda over the Richards girls. I really am, I think they've ran their course on the show. I don't, maybe keep Kyle as like a filler um, friend, but I don't, I don't know if there's uh, more that she could do because she just really didn't show up for me this season. Um, I don't know, but Eileen, uh, definitely Eileen is going to come back because Eileen is strong. Like if you pick an argument with her, you're going to get like, I, I feel like she gives the, she gives the audience reaction. You know what I mean? Like somebody who was watching the show, she's like that fourth wall for us. Eileen, and she's also the, um, not the sidekick, but she's the best buddy and sometimes bodyguard of Lisa Renner. So you gotta keep them two together because that's a strong little um, dynamic over there. Um, but I am, I am interested in seeing some new people. Erica Jane, of course, because she's a young, funky, you know, uh, fun, flirty friend. So you keep, you de they're definitely gonna keep her on because she attracts a lot of uh, POCs and the gay community. So they're definitely gonna keep her on the show. Um, Dorit, I don't know. I don't know if she did enough to come back. Uh, maybe. I wouldn't mind seeing her, but I wouldn't mind if she wasn't back. I hope they bring in some new people or maybe get the old people back. Maybe let's see what's up with Adrian Maloof. I don't know, but there needs to be some type of shakeup because this season was so dry. And to be honest, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is always a little bit dry, but I think because of the because of a certain generation that watches who grew up on Dynasty. I feel like we love watching uh, the elegant drama. So um, maybe that's why they keep this franchise around. I don't know, but I feel like they just need to do a bit more next season. So I'm hoping after the reunion, there's a little shakeup and uh, we get introduced to some, um, some new people because this season was just, eh, meh, I could do without it. Like if the best thing that happened this season was, were you doing coke in the bathroom? That says a lot about a season. Anyway, I will see you all for the reunion. Bye-bye.